I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, and welcome back to Niagara Pro Tips. Today we're going to be talking about the event service, which is something that's been around since the AX. However, it's not something that's probably widely used or that, that most people know about. And it's maybe a little bit of a sort of developer play, but not really for full-blown developers. You can definitely uh, just work with the product in the palette and the wire sheet and use the event service. In order to uh, demonstrate the event service, I have a, a station running on a Edge 10 controller. And this station is set up with the ACE network. So under the drivers, there's an ACE network uh, with the local device. And there's some control points set up here that are mapped in from the ACE engine. And under the home folder here, I also have a schedule subfolder with the enum weekly schedule in the folder. And in the services, I've already added uh, the event service to the station. Now, in the palette, you'll see the event service there. And when you drag it in, it will have this default source here, which gets used by the event service. I've added a one shot and a counter here to help with some demonstration purposes. Under the event palette, there's a sources subfolder. And inside of that, there's a number of different types of sources. You can monitor just uh, for a generic uh, event source. There's also um, component uh, source, which I'll demonstrate, and a component type source, a history event source, and an alarm event source. And these are gonna monitor for events from those types of things in the station. So to give you an idea of how this works, I'll drag in a component source here. And I'm going to uh, go look at the property sheet and we'll see there's an ORD property here which says where in the station should this source monitor for component events from. So I'll use the component chooser and pick the drivers in the ACE Edge network here, go under the local device and select the points container. And then there's a depth, which means how many children deep. So zero means just monitor the component that we're pointing to and to look for any of these B component events that we want to monitor for, like a topic being fired or a link being added or the component being reordered or renamed or things of that nature. In this case, I'm just going to select the property changed um, flag here on the, on the component event to monitor. And I'm going to leave this at zero here for just a second, um, just so that we can see um, the initial behavior. And I'll link the event topic to the uh, fire action on the one shot here. So under the points container, then, if I were to change something, like uh, if I went in here and, and invoked a set action on the occupied cooling set point, you'll notice that the counter does not increment. Now, the reason being is the component source is set with a depth of zero, which means just monitor that component and its direct properties. Uh, so uh, if I set this to one, then what that means is monitor the points uh, container, subscribe to that, and then also one level deep, subscribe to all those components as well. So in this case, it'll subscribe to all the control points under the points container and the points container itself. So. Then uh, we'll start to see uh, the counter will actually start incrementing, uh, possibly the space temperature changing or the set point or, or, or some other value changing. Uh, if I go over here and invoke an action like set on the set point again, you'll see that the event fires, which fires the action and the counter increments. And if I uh, do an override, for example, uh, for one minute, then uh, when I invoke that, the counter increments there to five. So it's picking up on any component events, any property change component events. So the out slot value changing or the innate uh, slot value changing or the fallback slot changing and so forth. It's causing this event topic to fire each time and then it's incrementing the counter. Now, if we take a look at the help for a B event, what we'll see is that uh, a B event really uh, has four pieces of information to it. There's a source, which is an ORD list that will specify the ORD to the component that the event came from, a timestamp of when the event happened, a UUID, which is just a you know a unique universal identifier uh, for that event in the station, and then there's a value property, which will have uh, some B value. It might be uh, a B status numeric or a B status Boolean if it's coming from a control point or 
could be a B abs time value or a string or whatever. But it's going to be some kind of a value that's being passed inside of that value property. So uh, we can use that information to maybe filter uh, some of these events. And in the event palette, we also have um, filters. So there's different kinds of filters, like a type filter, for example. Um, if I drag this out and, and look at the type filter, you'll see that the type filter just allows me to pick from a specific type spec, but that would filter down the events for maybe a certain kind of control point. Um, we also have a BQL filter, and the BQL filter uh, is pretty flexible, allows us to uh, set up a, a BQL predicate to filter out things in the events. So we would link the event topic to the process action on the BQL filter. And I'm going to duplicate these uh, control points here, or the one shot and, and the counter. And I just want to do that so I can see um, whether the filter is passing the, the, the events that are coming into the main uh, component source here or not. Now, looking at the BQL filter then, uh, we can get the value from the event just by saying value. It's really get value, but it gets abstracted or cut down to just the word value. And once we get the value, that's the B value that changed, then we could check something about it. Like maybe the slot name equals fallback. So each control point, when we invoke the set action, that actually changes the fallback slot value. So now um, you'll see, you know, most likely this counter here is incrementing quite a bit as the um, other control point values are changing and things. Now the counter um, on the output of the filter here, if I invoke a an override, for example, and we'll just do a, a one minute override, you'll see the this counter incremented to 35, but the counter off of the filter is still at zero. Now, if I invoke a set action, which will affect the fallback value, we're at 37 and zero. So when I invoke the set action, now we went to 38 and one, and then there's a couple more events coming through, obviously. Uh, but in this case, this filter is now narrowing this down to only the component changed events on, or the property changed events on the fallback slots of the points that are being monitored by this component source here. All right. Now, we also have um, some different ways to go about it. Let's say, for example, I was really only concerned about um, these control points changing, and these happen to all be numeric writables, right? They're set points. So instead of maybe using the component source with a depth, and maybe one other thing to kind of mention here actually is um, be careful about setting that depth, right? Um, I wouldn't want to put this point at the driver's level and set the depth to 10 or something like that where it's going to be subscribing to hundreds or thousands of components and things like that. Um, you would probably have a lot of high CPU activity and, and things of that nature. So you want to be careful about how deep you set the subscription and how expansive the, the component tree is that you're subscribing to. Now, another option is the component type source. So uh, what this allows me to do is to subscribe to uh, everything of a certain type in the station. So with the component type source, you have the type spec selector. And I can pick from the control module and then maybe a numeric writable and then we still have the same component events that we can filter on. So I could do a property changed or property added or, or removed or, or knob added, removed, those sorts of things. Uh, so in this case, we'll, we'll check for any property changed from numeric writables. And we'll go ahead and just duplicate um, these uh, counter one shot as well, just so we can you know, see the event firing. So we'll link from the topic to the fire action again here. And in this case, uh, if I uh, in, invoke an action, any sort of action, you know, set the fallback or uh, override any of the numeric writables underneath uh, in the station, actually anywhere in the station, not just under a certain component, but this is subscribing to all numeric writables in the station, then it'll fire uh, the action here on the one shot and we'll see that the counter will increment. So if I wanted to be more specific um, about uh, which uh, which of these points maybe, then we could again use a BQL filter maybe. And I'll show you a couple things with this one. So we'll link the event topic to the process action on the filter 
and I'll do the same thing and just uh, duplicate these points uh, components to, to count the uh, to count those events and on the filter then uh, I'm going to use something uh, remember the one of the properties here is the source and it's a B ORD list. Um, now, a B ORD list could have multiple ORDs, but in this case, it should just be the ORD to the component that changed. So um, we can reference the source and in the event and then get a string of that, which will be the ORD. And then I can check that to see if it jives up to something um, specific. So uh, remember, it'll be the whole ORD. The whole slot path so the star will be any number of characters and then I could say maybe OCC uh, star STPT so that should find any numeric writable um, that has OCC in the name uh, some other characters and, and ends in STPT uh, now that would exclude the unoccupied uh, cooling set points and heating set points in that case so if I look at the event service here again, and uh, you can see uh, there's just the one event here that initially I did. So if I uh, set the fallback on the OCT cool set point, you can see it, it fired an event on both of the counters. And uh, if I invoke maybe an override action on the OCT heat set point uh, for one minute, then we'll see it fired again the, the actions on both counters as well. So it's processing both the OCK heat and the OCK cool set point for any property changes. Now, if I uh, invoke a set or override action on the unOCK uh, cool set point, we'll see that the counter here incremented to four, but this counter on the filter did not. So the filter is effectively blocking out the unOCK cool and unOCK heat set point writables. Uh, now, what if maybe I didn't care about the fallback value changing, but I was only concerned when um, the OCT cool set point was being overridden, maybe. Uh, so just showing you kind of an example of, of some other things that we can do. So um, in the filter here, I could say and value to get the, the value property from the event. And then I would say uh, dot value to get the value from that property, actually. So um, the value, it, it sounds a little weird, but dot value call gets the property from the event and then dot value the second one gets the actual value from from that so that would be my status numeric and uh, I can check the status of that value then to see if it's overridden or not so we can add a filter sort of like that value dot value dot status and then dot is overridden is checking whether or not the uh, status numeric value has the overridden uh, status flag set on it or not so going back over here, um, we can see, again, we're at, at three currently. So if I uh, come in here and, and invoke a, a set action uh, on the cooling set point, then this counter incremented to six, but the filter blocked out the set slot, the fallback slot, because the status of the value was not overridden. Now, if I uh, invoke an override here, then uh, do one minute we'll see this increments to seven and this counter increments to four. So it, it picked up on uh, the fact that the status of the value was overridden and the name of the slot uh, that the event came from was also uh, satisfied in the filter. So this would allow us to, to narrow things down a little bit. Um, now there's other, um, you know, other things that we could do with the filters or the sources rather uh, and the filters. Um, we could monitor for um, uh, certain history event sources. Now, when you look at a history event source, um, there's no configuration properties. It's just monitoring for all history events um, in the station at that point. But when you look at the uh, filters, there's a history event ID filter. So you could narrow it down to only specific types of history events um, that you're interested in. And there's also um, a history ID filter where you can specify the history ID and that would narrow down to uh, uh, specific items as well. And when you look at the um, uh, alarm event source, uh, the alarm event source 
um, also just monitors the whole alarm database for all events. So again, you would be using um, filters, most likely uh, BQL filters in that case, maybe to filter some of the events that are coming from the alarm service. All right. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea, at least of uh, the different types of event sources that we can utilize and uh, stay tuned for the next video. We'll go into some details uh, there on, uh, on using recipients and uh, some other use cases for the event service. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next part.